Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to one of the last sessions of the day. I know you guys must be exhausted by now. You know, it's normal. Even two, uh, two days of uh, uh, pretty, I think, for you, like attending a lot of sessions. Right? So uh, I will try to keep this uh, interesting and conversational. Right? So the topic of my presentation, like first, a little bit of my, myself. My name is uh, Saurabh Vadwa. I'm a senior solutions uh, engineer at Uptix. You might have seen me you know, in one of the booths. Uh, so the topic of my presentation is uh, security that enables right, uh, breaking down security silos in the DevOps ecosystem. So what do we mean by security that enables? Right? So any CI/CD pipeline, right, or as I like to call it, innovation pipeline, it consists, uh, consists of uh, different components working together. And in the end, the developer's aim is to release code at a really fast pace, and you know, like they can overlook security. Right? But what the ultimate uh, aim is to make sure that security does not hamper innovation. That's why the name security that enables. So it basically enables the developers to be successful. It enables the security team to be successful, as well as the operations team. There is there has always been friction between uh, uh, you know security and developers. So we may, we want to make sure that there is you know that goes away. So here's the agenda of uh, my presentation. You know, like first would be introduction. Uh, second, you know, why are we seeing attacks? on the CI-CD ecosystem, right? What do the attackers see when they look at your pipeline? Next would be security gaps in a traditional pipeline with so many, you know, various, with various tools working together. You have your build tools, you know, repositories, your containers. It's, it's only like logical that, you know, like security gaps can creep in, whether they are vulnerabilities, whether they are their oversights, so we will look at how and why like security gaps uh, get uh, uh, become a part of the uh, traditional ci cd pipeline then i would like to go through uh, the dropbox breach right that's one of the latest ones that comes to mind you have like the circle ci as uh, a one two uh, when we say when we talk about attacks on a developer ecosystem right uh, on the left hand side you see one of the examples the last pass attack then you have the slack uh, a breach and the Dropbox breach. So I'll break down what exactly happened and what are the lessons learned. And in the last, I would be covering enabling dev and security teams to work together to create a successful uh, uh, working software in the cloud, which is secure. Now I'll go through like, why has there been a rise on the developer ecosystem, CI CD ecosystem? The first one being lack of integrated and automated security testing tools. You have, when you see your CI CD pipeline, right, you see your developer's laptop, you see code repositories, then you have image repositories on your containers in production. So many different components are working together, right? So there is overall a lack of integrated and automated security for these tools. And all these different components make for a large attack surface. So the attacker just needs to enter just in one particular stage, right? And then he can go, like for example, um, if, an, if an attacker enters and gets hold of access keys, which, you know, which were exposed by the developer, like the developer wants to be make, you know, uh, code really fast. He has uh, admin access to systems just to make his life easier. You know, hard codes, the keys, the passwords. If an attacker gets hold of those credentials, they know, like, you know, you have seen examples of, um, you know, like uh, Dropbox, you know, what exactly can happen. He can get access to those crown jewels, right? In a CI CD pipeline, your code is getting built, right? It's, it's something which is kind of a like a crown jewel for your organization, right? And then you have the reliance on automation right? uh, leads to complacency. It's just human nature. If anything is getting automated, 
you know, why care? You have automated driving cars right now. So reliance on automation leads to oversight, you know, vulnerabilities that uh, would have crept in. No one even paid attention to them. So we have to make sure that each and every stage of the CI/CD pipeline is actually being monitored, audited, and if something creeps in, uh, right at the first, which is shift left, you know, like the developer's laptop, we need to make sure that it's getting fixed as soon as we discover that. So here, you can, I've just mentioned uh, you know, the developer uh, uh, breaches that happened recently. You have the last pass attack, the Slack uh, one, where the employee GitHub tokens were stolen, and the Circle CI one, where the authenticated session keys were stolen. So this is different from the Dropbox one. So in Dropbox, it was actually a Circle CI imitation, but in, in this case, it's actually that, uh, an attack that happened uh, that targeted Circle CI organization. So what are the security gaps in the CI-CD pipeline? So why do the security gaps keep creep in your CI-CD ecosystem? So CI-CD is a term which has become a household name, but you know, organizations like, are still not an expert in CI-CD. Right? So probably like four to five percent might claim, okay, we have got a hold of CI-CD, but still there is unrealized potential for CI-CD adoption. System as such, the whole pipeline hinges on various dependencies and configurations. So developers use a lot of third-party libraries, right? and uh, so may, having such a diverse um, set of tools working together, right? there are dependencies, configurations, and because of that, vulnerabilities might creep in. And the last being haste and need for fast-paced delivery cycles. So in an agile environment, the developers want to just write code, commit it, and release the application. But then, again, as I mentioned, they overlook security. It, it should not be a, like a, like obviously the end goal is having a working software, but security is also important. So because of the hastiness and the fast-paced nature of the agile development, developers tend to overlook security, which you know, comes and which gets discovered what exactly was left unpatched when the workload is actually in production. So this is a traditional securing uh, like a CI/CD pipeline. Right? So just to recap what I've covered till now, like I covered you know, why are we seeing attacks on the developer uh, ecosystem? Why is security gaps creep in? Right? And this is like if you pay attention to this image, right? It's uh, a lot of things are going on. You have your de development stage, you know, code is being developed. It's being committed to a code repo like you know GitHub, and then uh, you have your building and testing tools. Um, the images that are getting built are being uploaded to registries, right? And then those uh, containers are running in production, having some kind of orchestration such as Kubernetes, OpenShift. So I would like to call the development and CI/CD pipeline uh, piece as pre-production and control plane and data plane as post-production. So let's focus on post-production, right? When the workloads are actually running. You will see that it consists of different services such as orchestration, runtime, like such as you know, Docker engine. And then you have the actual worker nodes running those containers. From a security perspective, right, this data is pretty siloed. Right? Like, take for example, container escape. So containers, when they are deployed, they just widen the attack surface. They share the same underlying IP space. So even if an attacker escapes one container, he will have access to the other underlying containers, to the host itself, and he can go deeper into your infrastructure. Now, if you look at the pre-production uh, uh, stage, we silo the development stage from the building and testing stage. Right? We never focus on developer laptops. Right? Developers do the groundwork for the so software development. They, you know, they have admin access to different uh, uh, tools. Right? 
But we never focus on developers' laptop security. And they don't even like that. So again, coming to a, from a security perspective, the data that's getting generated from the developer's laptop or even repositories is pretty siloed from what exactly is happening in the building and testing phase and the registry phase. So let me cover what exactly happened at, you know, when the Dropbox breach occurred. So this attack highlights the fact that there have been a rise of attacks on the developer ecosystem. We all know the reason why. They do the stuff, they get the stuff done, build code, develop, uh, develop the application. In case of Dropbox, what happened was, uh, if I'm a developer, I logged in, I saw this email from CircleCI, which is the tool they were using internally in Dropbox. I clicked on the malicious link. I had no idea that I was doing that. It took me to a fake CircleCI page, asked me my GitHub credentials and a one-time passcode. Once I entered the credentials and the OTP, the attacker took those credentials, logged into GitHub, and as a result, 130 internal repos were cloned. And this was no spray phishing attack. It was actually spear phishing because the developers were targeted. The attackers actually knew that CircleCI was being used inside Dropbox, so which shows that attackers are becoming sophisticated day by day. So on this screen, like this is again what I said. So basically, you know what exactly happened was it's, it was just a sophisticated attack that could not be prevented. Right? Logging into an invitation page, giving out your credentials, and then the breach just happened. So what are the lessons learned? One thing I would like to uh, point out, which is not on the slide, is user education and training is really important, right? Especially developers who don't care about security much, who don't, uh, are not involved with security. So user education and training is of utmost importance. They need to know if, if they see something fishy, they should reach out to the department, right? What exactly, like we got this email, but in this case, they just clicked on the link. So user education and training is really important. And then this attack, along with LastPass, Slack, CircleCI, it reinforces the trend that attackers are actually targeting the developer tools, the CI/CD pipeline. When they look from outside, CI/CD pipeline is a gold mine. Right? They know that okay, somewhere some vulnerability will prop up. So to avoid such scenarios, right, there are like some some of the lessons learned from the Dropbox breach. Just regularly rotate passwords and set up MFA, right? It's, it's a simple thing. Right. And attackers knowing that CircleCI was, using, uh, was being used internally, attackers are becoming more sophisticated and more familiar with environments. And it's really important to scan the source code repositories or even image repositories for any credentials. Right. In the haste of just releasing an application, making, making code changes, committing the code. You know, like, even like I was a developer in past life, I never cared of, you know, for, for you know, not hard coding the credentials. So it's really important to scan your code repos as well as image repos. And how, do, how can we enable dev and security teams right, to go hand in hand and have, give you a secure running application in the cloud? So first, What's a good and what's a bad security culture in an organization? And what are the characteristics? So in a good security culture, it builds trust. It builds trust within the teams. I am a developer. I trust the security team not to hamper my innovation. I can code. I can commit the code as I like, right? But still there is trust that, okay, you know, it won't hamper my innovation. It simplifies access and workflows. So if I, uh, if I have zero trust, for example, right, I, my machine is, you know, my machine is protected. I, I want to access any critical applications, 
Right? So based on my zero trust score, they were like, okay, this, this machine is good. You know, let, let the developer access the applications he's requesting access to. It encourages people to speak up. And then it enables users to be security minded as, as we learned from the Dropbox breach, users, developers, or any other person in an organization should have that level of security awareness that he can judge what's wrong and what's not. On the other hand, what's a bad security culture? Like it erodes trust. People, different teams don't trust each other, right? I'm a developer, I don't trust the security team. I will always think, okay, it will hamper my uh, speed. You know, let me just write code and commit it. It complicates access and workflows. And last, it, en it encourages users to hide their mistakes. Right? If I may, I know I did something wrong, like I left my credentials, right? but I don't care. It's already committed, the application is already running. I won't even let the security team know. Like if there are no tools in place, you know, it, I won't even work with the security team to make sure that I'm releasing a secure software. So what are the different security solutions that enable? First, zero trust frameworks, that's the latest buzzword. It's, it's a deviation from the traditional mindset of trust but verify. Always validate a user's integrity when accessing internal resources. It means, like zero trust is like on every stage you have to authenticate and then you get authorized. And similarly, having a zero trust score, it will differentiate good from the bad. And if I'm a good user, I can easily get access to internal resources. Second one, as I mentioned on the previous screen, we should scan for vulnerabilities. Um, in, that might have crept in uh, in the CI-CD pipeline, maybe because of you know, hastiness or user overlook. Then look for private keys, credentials, other secrets, which can be stored in images, which are already in a registry such as JFrog, Artifactory, ECR, and also registry code. So if you're committing, committing the code to a repo like GitHub, we should have the ability to also scan those uh, repositories because it reduces the attack surface. So again, zero trust builds, uh, builds trust if it's a good, it tells us the difference between good and the bad. It simplifies access and workflows. It redu reduces ability for lateral movement because at every step you have to authenticate, right? And it empowers modern developer work culture. It means like you have your BYOD policy or you know, work from home, remote. Today I'm working from Seattle, tomorrow I can be in Canada, right? So having the zero trust score for a machine can tell you like even if this person is out of his geographic area, this is still a good machine because we trust this machine. Right? And similarly, the second approach that we discussed about build time scanning, registry scanning, first it reduces the attack surface because if something is already patched, the, the attackers have less chances to exploit that. Right? Then it simplifies workflows, it enables team to release builds, right? I'm a developer, I'm happy. These, uh, these stages are secure. And then it hardens the static code and the container image repos. So for the conclusion, right. I would like to point out that whatever we have discussed, you know, whatever I have presented, that developers' ecosystems are being targeted. The attacks are becoming sophisticated day by day. The attackers are becoming more aware of internal environments. Good security enables developers to work dynamically and ship faster, more secure. It means security is no longer hampering innovation. It's actually driving innovation. So good security enables developers to develop a tool, a product, which is actually secure. And I can't you know, stress this enough that dev and security teams should go hand in hand. right? And they should go hand in hand to fix those gaps in a CI CD pipeline which might have crept in. And there are like numerous reasons. You have your diverse attacks, your diverse tools, user oversight, you know, probably like uh, access levels, like you have I don't know, admin access to tools. We can you know, protect this by tying down the access. So dev and security teams should work hand in hand. And 
a good security program should never hamper innovation, right? Your CI/CD pipeline, as I like to call it, is your innovation pipeline. That's where the stuff gets done. So a good security program should never, ever hamper, uh, hamper that innovation. So any questions? I'm open for questions. No questions? I think I did well then. <laughs> yeah, thank you.